Next up, we have Greenkeeper Africa, presented by Fola. The story of Greenkeeper Africa actually started in the 19th century, when a Portuguese settler in Brazil decided to bring a beautiful aquatic wildflower to his new destination, East Africa. And 100 years later, this plant has crawled over all our water bodies in the continent. I introduce to you water hyacinth, the most invasive aquatic plant in the world. If you put only few plants in a water pond and you wait a few months, you will end up with more than 600,000 new plants. For this, those women living on one side of the river and having to work on the other side of the river, crossing became a nightmare. And the consequences are dramatic on water quality, aquatic ecosystem, biodiversity, but of course on the life of more than 300,000 community members living on the coastal lakes. I am Fola Muftaou from Greenkeeper Africa, and four years ago, we started to address this challenge. We settled down a community harvesting system, and we thought about different transformation processes. But the best way to address the problem was to use this challenge to tackle another challenge. And this other challenge that we identified is industrial pollution. Between Lagos and Abidjan, the industrial sector is growing very fast, actually faster than the waste management system. Due to that, industries often have to bury the toxic waste or just to dump it out in the nature. We decided to use the capacity of absorbing pollutant, which is renowned by the, the fresh water ice and to make, to produce and manufacture a vegetal fiber, organic fiber, which is now able to absorb more than 12 times its weight in oil-based products. And we released more than 20 different products that we are now selling to different types of companies, construction company, oil storage company, oil exploitation companies in Togo, Benin, but Morocco, and also we start in Algeria. If you see on one side, you have the, the sand, which is the actual technique that people just go to bury. And the other side, we have our fiber, which absorbs and is extremely light and easy to recycle. Two challenge, ecological challenges, but at the same time, more than 700 community harvesters, among which 80% are women. But we still have a main challenge, that we are not satisfied with our actual recycling services. And we are looking for a new generation of recycling services. This is why we would like to call for the Solve MIT community and university and researcher to look for a better solution for the recycling services in Africa. Thank you very much. My first question is, um, uh, when you scale this up, will, will you still have enough water hyacinth, or will you eventually have to plant your own water hyacinth? Our main problem is not to have enough impact on the amount of water hyacinth that we could encounter in our region. If we look at the situation only of Benin, um, it will not, if we look at the industries of Benin, we cannot exploit the water hyacinth of Benin to satisfy the market. Actually, it's smaller. The market is smaller than the quantity of the water ice that we do have. So in my company, I just detail this solution, but we are actually looking for several solutions to actually exploit the whole water ice that we can find in order to have a sufficient impact on the life of the people in, living in these regions. The, the quantity is extremely high. But we are trying to uh, ob make it more objective, and we work together to build um, uh, observatory of invasive species in order to plan our production, the situation, the problems, and for the government and the public sector to be have better solution planning to solve this problem. Can I ask my second question? Sure. My, my second question was, could you give us an example of how you might recycle the material? Yeah, today we decide we work with the cement industries because in Benin, this is the only a uh, burning system that is actually working above 1,200 degrees, which is the only situation where you can burn this type of product today. Um, but it's not satisfactory because uh, it's a long way, it's logistically heavy, it's expensive for the client. So the client, they, 
So you have to come from a free service, just dumping it, to somewhere they have to pay a lot. So we are trying to find in-middle solution, and this is the one that we are lacking today. So my question is the applicability to the coastal uh, communities. Uh, it's a freshwater plant, so it's, re it's really a river type of uh, environment. Uh, how does that relate to coastal communities uh, with this, the saltwater environment? Okay, when you look at the geography in Benin, um, it's a river and lake plant. And in the south of Benin, the, there is two rivers coming to the a lake, which is a coastal lake, which is really huge. And the, the shore is extremely thin between the sea and the lake. And actually, all these communities are living there. And this is the situation that we encounter in Nigeria, Benin, Togo, Ghana, which is a lot of coastal lakes with fresh water, water icing. On the other side, you have a thin shore and the sea. Any last very quick remarks? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>